All right. We are live. Let's let a few people trickle in and then we can get this party started. Kabata Kids, thank you for joining me. This is my first live stream on this platform and today I'm going to talk a little bit about getting started with homeschool. I dream of Jeannie. Welcome to my first TikTok live stream. A little bit different than doing my one minute videos, but I figured we could talk a little bit about homeschooling, getting started, and what you need to look out for when you first decide to embark on the journey of homeschooling. And it is a journey, and as I always tell parents, you are not educating for today. Education is not a sprint. Education is a marathon, right? I don't care about arbitrary goals of the Department of Education, that your child should know this by this date, or whatever any outside body thinks about how you should educate your child. What we are trying to do as homeschool educators is to produce a fully competent, independent, free, and sovereign adult at the age of 18 years. And that starts with the simple process of removing your child from school. And that's where I want to start today. So um, I'll wait about another minute and then I'll just get into it. And if at any time any of you have any questions, please feel free to ask. I um, My other platforms, I'm very interactive and I figured I would give TikTok a shot here. So here we go. So you just decided to pull your child out of public school. So the question is, what do you need to do? And the first thing you want to do is make sure you do that process right. So you want to check with the Homeschool Legal Defense Association, HSLDA, go to their website, and you can download the forms that you need to formally withdraw your children from public school. It's very important that we as homeschool parents do things right in terms of paperwork, and I'm going to talk about record keeping in a little bit. Because when we get our paperwork right, it helps with one, it gives us protection, and two, it gives us options later on. So a lot of parents, when they first get into homeschooling, they're so hyper-focused on curriculum and socialization and what they need to do that they leave out the basics. The basics that we need to keep good records so that we have full flexibility in options we have later on, and we're going to talk about that. So the first thing you do, go to HSLDA and you download forms to formally withdraw your child from public school. You submit that paperwork to the school. Um, there's different scenarios. If you're doing it prior to the school year, there's one form. If you're doing it mid-school year, there's a couple of other forms. But make sure you get the right paperwork, very simple. And then after that, the first thing you want to do, before we look into homeschool methods, before we look into curriculum, the first thing you want to do as a new homeschool parent is familiarize yourself with your responsibility as a record keeper in the state that you live. Where do you find that? If you go to the Homeschool Legal Defense Association, you can click on the state that you live, sorry about that, and they list your requirements as a record keeper. And the reason that's important is because it helps create the transcript. So if you ever want to put your child back into public school, if you have a child who's already in high school and you're worried about getting into college, being in line with your state's um, regulations, as much as many of us don't like them, is very important. So familiarize yourself with your responsibility as a record keeper. So um, let me give you an example. If in your state it's required that an 11th grader, right, to graduate, learns about American history, then you want to be aware of that and you want to keep a record of your child's homeschool that they did in fact in 11th grade study American history. What if you have never enrolled your kids into school? I'm assuming this step isn't needed. 
It is needed. So let's say that you're a family that has um, never enrolled a child into school. Maybe you had a four-year-old turning five, turning six. You are still required by law to, and again, I'm not giving legal advice. I'm not an attorney, but to submit your intent to homeschool with your local school district. And the reason that's important is because, um, again, I'm not a lawyer, but it does give you certain protection if you file your paperwork the right way. And it helps with the keeping of these records and the forming of a transcript. So you just start homeschooling. Make sure you're familiar. Make sure you familiarize yourself with those record keeping requirements. Right. So that when you put together your child's homeschool portfolio, as some people call it, or you put together their transcripts as a college might call it, everything you do, you have a checklist and you can make sure that, you know, I don't know what happens in your homeschool, right? Only you know what happens. And I would certainly never tell you to lie, but you can make sure that when your child does apply to college, you have some documentation that your child did in fact, if he's required to study American history in 11th grade, did in fact study American history in 11th grade. Now, what actually happens in your home and how you structured that, you know, that's completely up to you. I'm not in your home. The state's not in your home. But you want to make sure that everything you do is in line with what the authorities require because that's going to help you get your child into college, right? The college transcripts. Um, everyone thinks it's the diploma, right? Everyone thinks it's the diploma. Will my child get a diploma? Colleges don't care about diplomas. Yes, um, when your child graduates, you issue them a homeschool parent given diploma. That is a thing, but that's not what matters. What matters in terms of getting into college is they want to see the transcript, which is what curriculums did you use? What courses did the child take? What extracurricular activities was the child involved in? And as a homeschool child, right, the colleges put a lot of weight on extracurricular activities and they put a lot of weight into um, references. You want to have at least three references outside of the home, whether that's employers, whether that's from your local church, whether that's from um, something your child volunteered in, maybe they played a sport and their sporting coach, anything your child's involved in, but in that portfolio and that transcript, you want to have those extracurriculars and you want to have three solid references. So it's good for college. And the other thing, and the other reason it's very, very important that the first thing we do as homeschool parents is familiarize ourselves with this role as record keeper. If you do decide to enroll your child back into public school, so maybe you have a sixth grader and things change in life, unfortunately, or maybe you just your values change, the way you want to go about things change, and now they're in eighth, ninth grade, and you go to enroll them back into public school, but you haven't kept any records, well, the school might say, I don't have any records that this child did sixth or seventh grade, so how can we put them into ninth grade, right? So you keep proper records, you make sure they are in alignment with the requirements in your state. Again, you could find that HSLDA, their website, very good organization. They are lawyers, I'm not, so check with them. But then you show your school, this is, um, I'm new to homeschool, my f son fell far behind in public school. Yeah, well then, you're doing the right thing and we're gonna talk a little bit about that and I think if this goes well, I might start doing this regularly um, and doing live streams so that I could connect directly with you guys, answer your questions. I'm happy to interact with you. I want to interact with you. And really, what's, I see what the homeschool community is concerned with because people inbox me all day asking me about my private homeschool community and questions about their children. And... By doing this live, I could answer a lot of these questions um, that I'm getting from so many people and it could really help everyone all at the same time. Um, yeah, we are talking homeschool. I was homeschooled and it was amazing. Yeah, well, that's what you see time and time again. And anyone who speaks with, um, who has the privilege of meeting adults that are homeschooled usually finds that they are very well-spoken, critical thinkers. They are social, capable of 
carrying conversations and interacting like everyone else. In fact, I mean, if you think about it, you know, most military families homeschool their children um, because their children are constantly moving from state to state as they get reassigned to different bases in different countries. And what you find with the children of military members is they're actually better at socialization. They're better at making friends because their entire life, right, they are forced into a situation because they move every two years in which they have to go up to people and say, hi, I'm Brett Pike. I just moved here and I, you know, would you like to hang out? I'd like to get to know you. So socialization, I'm going to do a lot of talk on that, um, but that's for another day. But it's only a problem if you don't make it a priority. So you make it a priority. So sticking to the record keeping, um, if you want to put your child back into public school, yeah, we are a military homeschool family and um, I live in a military town now. My father... um, Marine served in Vietnam. My grandfather, Marine, served in World War II. So I love our vets and um, we're very thankful to have you. But you want to keep good records because if you want to put that sixth grader back into public school in ninth grade, you need that portfolio. Otherwise, they're going to say you don't have any proof that this child was homeschooled. There are a ton of good resources available to keep records. I'm Right now, I'm on Homeschools Connected. I'm looking at my private platform, but I just click on resources. Let's see. Uh, I click on record keeping, right? Record keeping and transcripts. So Homeschool Legal Defense Association has a service. Um, Transcript Pro is another service. Homeschool SkedTrack, right, is a free service that assists you in making a portfolio for your child Um, That one's on the house. And again, when people join my platform, they have access to all of this, and I do shamelessly plug it. So once you familiarize yourself with your responsibility as a parent record keeper, you want to pick a curriculum? I don't think so. What I would do and what I recommend to new parents is the first thing you should do is familiarize yourself with the different mythologies that people utilize within their homeschooling. Now, a very popular one that everyone always asks questions about, right? Unschooling. What is unschooling? Maybe, you know what? Maybe later this week I'll do, would you guys be interested if I did a full um, live stream specifically devoted to unschooling? Another one specifically devoted to Montessori. Another one devoted to Charlotte Mason. And another one devoted to the classical trivium of education, which um, grammar, logic, and rhetoric, and it's the method of education that is taught at the most elite private schools in the country. Um, Something I'd also like to do streams on, um, if you ever, if you follow the work of John Taylor Gatto, great teacher, um, he actually did research and he found 14 lessons that children in the country's most elite private schools are taught um, that public school students aren't. So great, people are interested. So I'll do streams on all of these topics. So in the interest of keeping this one general, because this is the introduction to homeschool stream. Um, After you familiarize yourself with record keeping, familiarize yourself with unschooling, Charlotte Mason, Montessori, and classical education, the classical trivium of grammar, logic, and rhetoric. While I have you guys here, I could recommend some reading if you're interested in it, and maybe I'll do streams um, even on these books. So again, um, I'm in my platform, Homeschools Connected. I go to Homeschool University, parent reading. If you want to learn about the classical trivium of education, how to teach your children, there's a book on that called the Well-Trained Mind. Um, There's so many great books. Teaching from Rest, Learning Year by Year, A Call to the Wild and Free, which is about unschooling, Free to Learn by Peter Gray. These are great books that new homeschool parents should read. And of course, the one book that I think all new homeschool parents should read is The Five-Hour School Week, which takes you... And by the way, if you guys have any questions, please... Um, jump in. I'm more than happy to interact with the community. I, I love it. And 
Um, in my opinion, the homeschool community is the best on the internet, the best in the country because everyone likes to yell at politicians and yell at the TV screen that this is the change we need. But change starts when you look in the mirror and it starts when you take personal responsibility. And to me, the way we uh, make a better future, the way we build a better country is homeschool parents. And that's why I encourage that every day of my life. I didn't expect it to be so difficult to homeschool with special needs kids. So yeah, I get so many inquiries from parents with special needs children um, that I recently started doing more education on the topic. And some of the curriculums that I found that are specifically devoted to that are the Gemini learning system, um, the time for learning. Again, it depends on what your child's special needs are and Memoria Press. So those are three resources that are specifically devoted to um, children with special need. And of course, there's so much more. And if anyone ever has any questions, inbox me. Or if you really want the whole thing, join my private homeschool community because your success becomes my success. And I take that very seriously. Can you do videos on how to homeschool depending on age? Yeah, absolutely. Um, Because... Well, here's what I tell parents all the time. The primary objectives of early childhood education are to create free thinkers that embrace their creativity and to teach children the process of learning itself. So when children are entered into public school, right, and history is such a great example, they say, okay, little Johnny, I want you to memorize this historical figure, this action on this date, right? This battle took place. But what they're teaching is memorization. What I want to focus on in early childhood education is you want to focus on the actual process of learning so that your child becomes a capable independent learner, right? And from there, as they get older, by the time they get to middle school, they should be in control of most of their education, right? They should be pursuing their interests, researching topics of, um, of that they're interested in, um, doing original research projects. And by the time they get to high school, they should really, you should really just be an overseer and they should be completely in control of what they're doing with their education. You know, minus the basic high schooler stuff that, you know, Johnny, I know you might not want to do some math, but I need you to do some math here. But they should be capable of taking the lead in their education if you focus on the process of learning over um, over memorization or anything of that nature. Do you have a favorite program for struggling readers? Um, yeah, so again, I just come over here to, let's see. I can show you guys what I'm looking at, but I have my platform here and I just go to English, um, reading, early childhood, and then all programs you know, that teach early, uh, that teach young children about reading. So all about reading is, um, a great resource. The easy peasy all in one homeschool has great learning to read programs, um, hooked on phonics, reading eggs. There are many good programs, um, for really whatever you need. That's the beauty of homeschooling in the modern world that, There have been these companies that have been focused on homeschooling for so long that it's light years ahead of the virtual learning you're getting in public school. And all people need is a little bit of direction, right, to be pointed toward the right resources. And that's what I've been doing is pointing, say, this is the resource you need to use. And families are more than capable of um, giving their children a much better education than they could ever get in public school. Just signed my 13-year-old my 13-year-old up for the Khan. That's the Khan Academy. That is a completely free homeschool curriculum, K through 12. It's online. Very good resource. So if you're struggling with money, um, if you're worried about the cost of things, Khan Academy is a great free homeschool curriculum that any of you could start right now. Um, which brings me to. My next bullet point, right? I, I'll go off tangent because I do want to interact with all of you. But um, after you study the methods, right, um, 
after you study unschooling and Charlotte Mason, Montessori, classical, um, a classical education, um, the classical trivium that you would find through a program like Classical Conversations, Christian-based um, curriculum, right? You want to focus on what curriculum you want to actually use. Um, yes, they have a ton of programs for computer coding, which is a skill I'll get to that all children should be introduced to computer coding. And if your child takes to it, I could show you how to um, really get them on the fast track to be successful um, in building that as not only a skill, but potentially getting them business experience and developing a career, right? Because um, another big problem I have with public school, one of my biggest problems with public school is children go to school for public school for 12 to 15 years, right? And they get virtually no business experience. They're, everything's taught out of context, right? Now you do this, Johnny. Okay, go to science class. Now you memorize this. Okay, go to history class. Now you memorize this, right? But where is the context? Where is the real world experience showing children that what they're learning matters and showing them that they have value that they could put into the world? Because a child who's educated properly should not only have business experience, but in my opinion, and if you read the books like the five hour school week, other experienced homeschoolers will tell you that your child should already own a business by the time they graduate high school and they're 18 years old. So they shouldn't be um, just worried about college debt and what they're going to do when they're 22, 23 years old, going to college, taking on debt, not declaring a major, right? But they should have um, a skill set that they've developed over the last 12 to 15 years. They should have different skills that I'll get into in a minute. Um, and then they should have a lifetime of marketing, sales, business experience so that when they're 18 years old, um, they're capable of being free and independent, sovereign adults who don't have to take on debt, who could take care of themselves, who could afford to pay their own rent or possibly get their own house. I mean, all of these things are possible if you educate your children the right way. And that's what we do in homeschool. And that's what I teach parents every day. I have an eighth grader. We do four hours a day. Um, yeah, I don't even think you need four hours a day. I mean, I would think three at most and I would say two. Um, but it really just depends on your schooling style. And, you know, that's what works for some people. So, so once you figure out what method you want to use, then you choose a curriculum. And like, you know how I brought up that classical conversations is a Christian based curriculum, right? So obviously you want to know that if you're Christian, right? If maybe if you're an atheist, maybe that's not the curriculum for you, right? So you have to figure out what works, but they focus on the classical trivium of education, grammar, logic, and rhetoric. So if that's what you're interested in, those are the type of curriculums you look at. If you're more interested in like Charlotte Mason style, you know, maybe you look at the good and the beautiful. So there's different curriculums for every style that families might be interested in. And that's why it's important to choose your style. We include cooking, canning, baking. All right. So yeah, that's right. Cooking and canning. I love that. So that's the real transition. So you choose your curriculum and that's great. You use that as a guideline. But the real power of homeschooling is what I talked about. It's developing skills in your children, giving them real world experience so that by the time they're 17, 18 years old and their friends don't know what they want to do with their life and they're taking on $200,000 of college debt, your child has skills. They know they have value. They have a lifetime of experience doing things in the real world, providing services, engaging in business so that they know they have value and they could earn a living right away. So if you, and I'm just going to read off of Homeschools Connected here, but for example, some of the things that I teach people in my group to work on their children with is um, teaching their children digital illustration teaching their children to draw, teaching their children graphic design. Someone brought up computer coding. Let me show you this. 
All right. So can you guys see that? So computer coding, I click on that and I go middle school, high school, right? These are all amazing programs designed to teach children, um, this at the middle school level, computer coding. And it goes from the basics where you could start at a, um, a low monthly subscription, right? Like some of these services are $15, $20 a month, and they step-by-step -step teach your children computer coding. And then if your child really takes to it, it goes all the way up to where you can hire one-on-one -on -one tutors. Obviously, that's more expensive, but you could hire one-on-one -on -one tutors and they could really get into the depths of computer coding. And from there, you can use that to start to teach your children real-world real skills because they could actually, um, what I would do if your child was good at computer coding is as part of his homeschool education, I would say, okay, I want you to approach um, maybe this week, here's your assignment. I want you to research a few local businesses, see whose website is lacking, and then I want you to approach them with a business plan and an offer that you can build a website for their company at a fee. And with that, you can actually have it where your eighth or ninth grader starts to get real world experience, starts a business and earns money, and think about the mindset development that you're creating in that child. So. We, I show parents how to teach their children computer coding, construction, starting, right, how to build things with their hands, um, engineering, and these skills are so important, and here's why. Um, this is a concept I call creative excellence, but a child who is capable of taking what's in their mind and bringing it into physical reality has the tools available to them to unlock the full potential of their imagination and their creative mind. How much, uh, my group's $10 a month. If you use the promo code uh, connect, you can find the links to it in my, um, my profile. Um, so yeah, a child who is, um, can take what's in their mind through art, construction, engineering, computer coding, right? It's a big one. Um, when they get an idea, they're able to bring it into physical reality. So maybe they're doing something like, um, maybe your child's into construction, right? So you take like an eighth or ninth grader and you say, okay, here's what I want you to do. I want you to construct a couple of garden boxes and then I want you to go to the local church um, and donate them a garden box that you construct for them and ask that they put up your flyers. And of course the church will. And they put up flyers saying that you're available to make these garden boxes for anyone else in the community at a fee, right? And then people will actually hire your eighth or ninth grader while all their friends are like working at Ralph's Italian Ices with a remedial summer job where they're not learning anything. Your child has started a summer business in which people are paying them money to make garden boxes. And you're showing them how they did something for free for the church use that as basic marketing. We're able to get clients, get sales. Then you teach them the accounting and all these real world skills that the school system doesn't do. And by the way, I mean, I don't mean to say anything, but does anyone actually think public school is better than homeschooling? I mean, come on. So you can do these things and you can, you can do this for your child. In New York, homeschooling 11 year old for the first time, behavioral issues, Behavioral issues during the homeschool process. Uh, behavior in the home, that's, that's a big issue, right? I mean, a lot of children have like ADHD and um, things of that nature. And what I would suggest is, um, again, I don't know the ins and outs of what goes on in your house, but homeschool provides the flexibility to one, maybe they're having a hard time sitting around so you can allow them to do more physical activities, right? Um, you could allow them to do bench pressing and working out. Um, you can get them invo involved in sports, right? You can get them involved in um, things in the community, a local club, a theater, whatever they're interested in. Um, but that's the other thing, right? You let them follow their interests. So as the example I gave earlier, right, a child who's interested in construction, well, I could have little Johnny out in the yard for two hours building garden boxes and then I'm not so worried about his behavior. But obviously there has to be some degree of discipline in the home 
Um, and I think the best thing you can do for that is make sure that you and every, all the other adults in the house are really on the same page because and that's something we as parents, right, we all have to um, learn to deal with and a lot of us could struggle with it at times and um, it's an ongoing process. My son can get through lessons for life, can't get through lessons for the life of me, um, but can hack a computer really well. Yeah, so, I mean, if that's the case, let your son do more computer-led stuff. So, if he's interested in that coding stuff, right, then show him how to do basic things where he could start to do business stuff and learn real-world skills, get real-world experience through what he's already doing. But, yeah, I mean, um, financial literacy, uh, you could teach children about the stock market, you could teach them STEM foreign language, interior design, um, teach them about nutrition, cooking, right? There's so many, cooking is such a great skill because it's the type of skill that children can learn at a very young age and you can use that to start to show them they have value in the world. So, you know, an example of that is I have um, a niece who is seven years old who has already um, baked cookies and put on little um, sales, right? Little bake sales. And she sets up a table um, at the local park and she brings her cookies and people pay her money and it might not be a lot, but think about the lessons that seven-year-old is learning about how valuable she is and what she can do in this world and she's going to be a force to be reckoned with when she's 17, 18 years old. Oh, my wife. My, my three-year-old makes fresh pasta and gives it to the neighbors. Yes, he certainly does. And my wife posts the videos to prove it. She's uh, an amazing, amazing mother. Um, but cooking, homopathy is another thing, right? So many of us are concerned about what's happened in the world for the last year. Well, you could actually, there are curriculums. One of them that I love, um, what is it called, is the... Poella Brown homopathy curriculum, which actually has your children work hands on with herbs and learn about the healing properties of herbs and make teas. And it's just a great life lesson to teach children about nutrition, teach children about health, um, music, photography, public speaking, um, all of these topics, survival, videography, photography that I help parents with every day and you could incorporate into your homeschool. And I, I certainly suggest that you do that and follow the interest of your child. Yeah, I, I can spell that, Poella Brown. I won't try to spell it without reading it because I'll embarrass myself. P-A-O-L-A, that's P-A-O-L-A, Brown, Poella Brown. So, all right guys, I think I might do this again Tomorrow, I might make this a thing every day at 12 o'clock if it's something you're all interested in. Um, I think we covered a lot of topics, and um, tomorrow we'll cover some more introduction to homeschooling topics. And any questions you have, if there's anything you want me to cover, anything specific to your child, inbox me, direct messages. I can't tell you between all my social media, like how many messages I get a day. So if I don't answer you in a few days, don't be like, oh, this guy's a jerk. Just give me a week to get to it. I will, I do answer everyone eventually. Um, I will get to your inquiry and anyone who um, wants direct immediate access to me, the members of my private homeschool community, when they want, when they have questions, I answer right away and I drop whatever I'm doing with everyone else because first cut, I mean, they're, they're my priority. And once you become a member of my community, your success is literally my success. So anyway, thank you for tuning in. This is a lot of fun and, um, I will catch you guys tomorrow. And, um, I realized I have no idea how to end a live stream because this is the first one I've done. How do I, how do I end this? I might be trapped here. It's a trap. It's a trap. How do I do this? Let's see. They're like, he tried to go away, but he couldn't because he didn't know how to end the live stream. Power. End live stream video.